of its suspected Al-Qaeda connections, war-torn Somalia had the added misfortune of being the site of another American tragedy. It was here in 1993 that the bodies of American soldiers were dragged through the streets by militias loyal to Muhammad Ideed, an act which was never avenged. Somalia has been a place that has harbored uh, Al-Qaeda and uh, to my knowledge still is. By November, the U.S. fleet had taken up positions off the coast of Somalia. The Americans shut down the country's banking system, and most analysts expected Somalia and its capital, Mogadishu, to be smouldering by Christmas. But then the American hawks went quiet, and it's now becoming clearer why. A quirk of fate has delivered the US a remarkable ally in Somalia. Not the official government there, but the main warlord of Mogadishu. Superpower to superpower. A man with some remarkable qualifications to deal with the Americans. A US citizen, a former city engineer from California, a Gulf War veteran and former US Marine. I'm a Marine and always I will remain to be a Marine. And I believe the American ideal and American way of life. And I grew up and educated in the U.S. And uh, I have an excellent uh, relationship with the U.S. people as well as the U.S. government. Most remarkable of all, he's the son of Muhammad Ideed, who many hold responsible for the death of 70 U.S. and U.N. soldiers in Mogadishu in 1993. What's more, he's a member of the Republican Party, and although a Muslim, he shares America's distaste for radical Islamic groups. We cannot allow Somalia to be an Islamic state. The, those who try to, uh, uh, to, uh, to say that we are anarchic, we are this, the alternative for Somalia is to have a Biladen government. Uh, th there is no other alternative. And Somalia be a base, biggest base in the Horn of Africa to launch uh, 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 terrorism in, in, in the US, in the Europe, in uh, neighboring countries. At this sports day in Addis Ababa, the tribal loyalties of this region are on display. It's in the chanting, not on the track, where each tribe seeks to portray its superior qualities. Perhaps none so dramatically or as accurately as the Somali team. But they're not the only Somalis in town. The main warlord of Mogadishu has left the presidential palace there and come to Addis Ababa to drum up regional and international support for his cause. Support for what he sees as the forthcoming decisive battle for Somalia to finish off the Islamic groups there and the UN recognized government that nominally controls it. The militia, uh, their objective... Uh... Hussein Ideed is confident in the capacity of his infamous militias to win any battle. No, uh, they're not afraid at all. For them, uh, dying is not in their book. Uh, for them, catching the other person's, the enemy's rifle, is their main objective and, uh, and uh, they will go within uh, less than 15 minutes to overtake the professional army, train it, to take from his rifle. They were ready to lose their life. So that kind of mentality they have and they're not... And they the are... rifles his men have been capturing are from the UN-backed transitional government, the TNG. Installed two years ago, 
it's become virtually irrelevant in the face of IDs militias. Yes, but the enemies, uh, enemies dead and wounded are uh, time stamp. It's a long way from California. A twist of history in 1993 set him on a path from city engineer to leader of the Mogadishu militias. For the past decade, Somalia has been in an almost permanent state of civil war. In 1991, Aidid's father was one of the leaders of a successful revolt against the dictator, Siad Barre. Muhammad Aidid emerged as the central figure of the chaos that followed, fighting off a hundred factions across the country and firmly holding on to half of Mogadishu. pitiless war unfolded. Aid groups that tried to assist civilians with food and medicine were attacked and looted. As starvation took hold, the international community led by America stepped in. It's sort of like the cavalry coming to the rescue, straightening things out for a while and then letting the marshals come back in to keep things under control. December 1992, America commits ground forces to protect the delivery of food aid to the starving. Among the thousands of Marines that came ashore was Hussein Aidid. It was an unexpected return to Somalia, a country he'd left behind as a teenager 14 years before when he'd gone to live with his mother in America. It was also an unusual reunion of sorts with his father, who his fellow soldiers would soon be trying to kill. There was no sign then that Aidid, just three years later, would be leading the militias that the US was now clashing with. Aidid had totally embraced his new country and life. Did you like, uh, like California? Yeah, too much. I know every corner of California. A good life there? Yeah. Girls, I used to date a lot when I was young. Like After a three-month tour of duty in the early days of the Somali mission, Aidid returned to his job as a city engineer in California, his life in the Marine Reserves, and ongoing studies at California State University. Uh, I did minor African studies and I did minor economics and minor political science. While I was doing that... His marriage in 1996 to a Somali girl, also living in America, radically altered the course of his life. And I saw this new government, so I, I thought I could help. He returned to Somalia for one week to meet her parents and his father. Ah, so when... I never went back to the US. You never went back? Almost as soon as he arrived, his father left for yet another front line. Aidid immediately followed and in the chaos decided to stay for a while. Advisor. Was that part of your plan or this no. was a decision you made when the you decision got decision I made right there. In the southern sector of Mogadishu, thousands turned out for the funeral of Muhammad Farah Aidid. To the mourners... Just nine months after Aidid's return to Somalia, his father was assassinated. To the outside world, he was a despotic warlord responsible in large measure for five years of clan violence, famine and civil war. The engineer from California virtually inherited the tribes and militias that his father had created. A new warlord was born. According to Aidid, his virtual rule of Mogadishu has ushered in an unprecedented era of peace and prosperity except for his continual battles with the Islamic group al Ittihad and the official government who he claims supports their fundamentalist agenda. Well, look, I wouldn't have liked to have been living in uh, Mogadishu in the last 10 years when it's been under, effectively under your control or under your father's control. No, Mogadishu is, uh, is doing booming very well. It has the best uh, uh, telephone system, best economy. People live peacefully. Even to this day, there must be, I think, there's something like five gun battles a day in uh, Mogadishu. Not, not much, really.